In this video, I will talk about how I prepared the pigeons for today's 500 mile race and give you a few secrets that will save you a lot of time and show you how little work pigeons actually need during the race season if you feed them correctly. The biggest problem for most is 90% of all pigeons shipped to the races are too heavy for the races. So I'm going to help guide you. I'm going to show you what went on. Now, last week we had a 317 mile race. Our hen won first Southern New England Combine. The cock who came with her was fourth Boston Concourse. Uh, they finished fourth and fifth New England Open. And those two pigeons, if you can believe it, they flew the 400 mile race three weeks before. They were on the 75% barley mix after the feeding after the race. And in a three week period, they were out of the loft four times. They had four training flights, no loft flying. So they had three tosses from 30 miles, one from 45 miles. Three week period, they came back, topped the combine, excellent results. Now this week, I have a, today actually, I have a 507 mile race. I hope for a good result. I have three super hens that I'm really depending on. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Now those hens, they flew two weeks ago at 500 miles. They rested for 10 days. On Tuesday, I had to pick up a widowhood cock that was lost. It was about 45 miles south of me. I said, I'll take the pigeons. I planned on training them 30 miles that day anyways. I took the pigeons. It was a tough toss. I got home. Many of the hens weren't home after about two and a half hours. I had no cocks until three hours after the toss. So those pigeons, that was it. The birds that flew the 500 mile race had one training flight, no loft flying in a two week period. So today they're in the race. I'm hoping for great results. My prediction, not exactly sure. I expect McLaughlin's 21 436 to lay down an amazing performance. My next best hand, I did ship the bird that won the combine last week. That's the only repeat. She's a three year old, McLaughlin's 21 417. She had the Tuesday toss also, only time out of the loft all week. And then there's the McLaughlin's 21 838 that actually has been a really good hen. She was my second bird at the five, I think it was. So she was, uh, yeah, I think she was my second bird. Now, interesting thing with 838, two weeks ago on the Thursday before shipping the 500, the birds went on their 45 mile toss the day of shipping. That's the day they eat the fat seeds. I did feed them fat seeds the night before. She came home panting, huffing and puffing. This was one of my best hens, just flew less than an hour. She came home panting, panting. Did I panic? No, it was warm. She only flew less than an hour. Two days later, she flew 11 and a half hours and was at the top. Many would have said, oh no, my birds have respiratory. Again, don't go crazy with all this stuff. So this week, the birds, they flew two weeks ago, 500 miles. They rested. They ate the rich seeds on Saturday and on Sunday, all the fat seeds. Now I'll put a link to the video of what's in my water and what I feed the birds. I'll put a link up here so you can see that in an earlier video this season. Now they ate the fat seeds for two days. They flew the, after the race. Same thing in the water every week. They rested for 10 days, they had one toss. Now I'm rolling this team out after one training flight in a two week period. My videos help people that don't have a lot of time. If you're a champion flyer and you wanna reduce the amount of effort and still have super results, follow some of these systems. Now, as many of you know, no medications. I never treat the birds with antibiotics. They are antibiotic free. So the birds flying today, and it's gonna be pretty tough, it's a straight, wind on the side, maybe even a little bit of the headwind. They're flying from the west southwest from Ashtabula, Ohio, and the wind is from the north. So we'll see what happens. I expect it could be 12 hours. Hopefully I'll have a superstar at 11 and a half. I do expect the McLaughlin's 21 436 to lay down a tremendous performance today. So let's see what happens. Now today they'll eat all the rich seeds they want. They'll rest for 10 days, and then I'll get them ready for the 600 mile race. Um, the next couple of days after the race, they'll get the apple cider vinegar, but I've showed that in all my videos. And again, if you like my videos, please subscribe. I'm gonna try to film the birds coming in tonight from the race. It's always difficult 
because I end up burning through the camera, but I'm gonna try to keep the camera running, film the birds coming home. I'm hoping to have a really big performance. I love the body weight, and the body weight, what I feel was perfect with one training flight in a two week period between races. Before I forget, I wanted to tell you how I fed the birds this week. Because Tuesday was such a tough toss, I gave them their normal portions of their barley mix. Uh, again, I show the measurements in my videos, what I give them each day. But that evening, after all the birds were home, I gave them another maybe 50, 60% feeding of Vercel Laga Champion Mix, the IC Plus, because they had such a crazy workout. I can't have pigeons flying two, three, four hours and just feed them the barley mix. So I gave them the champion mix on Tuesday evening. Now, we ship on Thursday. Wednesday, they ate the barley mix as usual. I gave them their normal amount, one pick pot per 10 pigeons of the 75% barley. Wednesday evening, I went in with the fat seeds. I gave them maybe a feeding... 75% of the normal daily ration of the fat seeds. Thursday, I loaded them up. All the fat seeds they could eat, they just had whatever they wanted. And what was interesting, the crops were relatively full um, early on in the day. And even at, when I basketed the birds for shipping, but when I put them in the race, um, they had digested much of the feed. They had maybe a half ounce of fat seed in each of them. So hopefully they'll eat on the truck, or they ate on the truck yesterday, they drank yesterday. I never want my birds to eat much on the truck. I'd rather them be full the day before and just pick on the truck. Maybe they get a good drink this morning and uh, be able to fly the flight. We'll see when they come home what they look like, but I'll be showing the videos of the birds what I clock, what time they came home. I think I shipped nine hens and seven or eight cocks. So I have a decent team. I'm actually really excited about three of the hens though. Maybe something will jump up and surprise me. Rarely does that happen. Usually I pretty much get what I expect. It's been 10 hours and 15 minutes. My cocks are racing to the bigger loft. My hens are racing to the small loft. I'm not sure when they'll be home. I'll try to catch them on video. It's a bright blue sky, about upper 70s in temperature. Pretty much a side wind. We'll see what happens. Wow, I never dreamed I'd get a cock first today. The bird beat McLaughlin's 21 436. Maybe he's a good one. Three year old pigeon. He looked great all week. He flew 10 hours and 43 minutes. And still, I'm surprised. I hope to see um, one of my top three hens come soon, but I expect 436 any second. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's McLaughlin's 21, 417. Boy, uh, what is that? 11 hours and 41 minutes, something like that. This is the hand McLaughlin's 21, 417. She won the combine last week and uh, was fifth New England Open. And uh, she didn't feed or drink, she went to the minerals. She just got home a couple minutes ago, a minute ago. This is my first cock today. Um, this is McLaughlin's 21, 381 pencil cock. Again, looks pretty good. He looked good from when he came home. He flew like 10 hours and 43 minutes. The hen was almost an hour later. Amazing. Not sure if there's a lot of birds around or what kind of day we're dealing with. We're just dove from behind the loss. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Another hen. Um, uh, nearly 12 hours, 11 hours, 55 minutes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The Gloffs, 22, 838. Nope, I'm wrong. It's a clock. 
cock just came home. He's eeling cock he's eating. That's the first bird. Should be a good pigeon. I only have four pigeons home. Uh, it's right now, it's been 12 hours and 40 minutes since liberation. It's about 6.55 at night. They were up at uh, 6.15 this morning. This is the first bird. He's cooing and uh, looking good. He's going to get ready for the 600 in a couple weeks. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let's go see who that is. I hope it's 838. McLaughlin's 22, 838. She likes to run in the cock loft. Come on. No, nope, another cock. There he is there. Gloss 21, 277. And he just flew 13 hours. Two weeks ago, he came in at like 8.07. He flew close to, I think it was 14 hours. He's drinking now. I have my normal mix in there. The honey, um, the roni, some um, vitamins and electrolytes and the new biotic the oregano and cinnamon just like a recovery mix very light it's not a concentrated mix very light and um, but they recover nice on it kind of like a pigeon pigeon Gatorade is the first cock up there calling and calling he looks good considering he flew I'll put the lights on. We'll see. I'll put the results at the end of the video. Hopefully he's right near the top. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. My six pigeon. Good little chocolate hand. I really like her. Two year old. 1205. It's going in the clock loft. I don't really care where they trap. Maybe she'll go over to the hens. She was bred there at the end of last old bird season. So they still like to run in there if it's open. Usually it's closed and uh, we'll see what happens. But that was my sixth bird. I shipped 15 and um, hopefully I get the rest of them back. I'm missing two of my favorites, which is disappointing. And as you can see, my brother never mows the lawn, but today is his birthday, June 15th. 2024 and um, I live about 10 minutes from the lofts and as many of you know I'm moving to Florida I'll be leaving in July and gonna set up some pigeons down there my brother's gonna keep some pigeons up here I raced the cock celibate I raced the hen celibate as you can see the boys they see a hen in the loft they're all excited three birds that came home from the race I know there's one other one under there calling That was the first bird there, and she just came home. Looks pretty good. She flew uh, 13 hours and 15 minutes, and in two weeks, these birds will fly the 600 mile New England Open from Sandusky, Ohio. I fly 608 miles, and uh, they'll rest now for the next 10 days. They won't leave the loft. They'll eat the rich mix today and tomorrow all day today all day tomorrow then back on to the barley mix and then two training tosses and then back to the 600 mile race i'll load them up with fat seeds probably for two days for the 600 and uh, but they'll only have two flights now between today and the 600 mile race and hopefully we'll have a big performance in the 600 it's very exciting to get birds on the day Usually they'd be coming in about this time. And uh, there's the hen that just came home. And we'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed that I still had a good result, at least with him. Here's my seventh pigeon. 
coming up on 13 hours and 45 minutes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now the clock. As you can see, these pigeons have flown all day. They look really good. They look tremendous, actually, and uh, has a lot to do with the health and the condition of the pigeons. And I will put a video up at the end here so you can see, you know, what I feed them. Uh, all the different minerals that are in front of them. I use the mixed minerals, the grits, all the pick pots, the cups, everything. Minerals are so, so very important. And uh, the grain, I'm lucky to get the Belgian grains. But I flew just as good with every other type of grain years ago. It didn't matter that much. But I'm very happy the way the birds are looking on coming home. And that's a pigeon that almost flew, well, closing in on 14 hours. Looked really, really good. And another pigeon circling here. I'm praying it's one of my good hens, 838, hopefully. I'm missing two super hens. Very disappointing, but that is, I think, my eighth pigeon out of 15. Um, maybe five minutes after the last one, coming up on 14 hours on the wing. Bird that just entered, another three-year-old cock. McLaughs 21, 337. Good cock, I like them. Long day, again, they'll get ready for the 600. I might as well show you. They're eating the mixed minerals. It's the all-in-one Vercella Laga. They tend to go to that before they go to the feed, which is funny. The minerals are more important for recovery than the feed, although they need the feed. They need the fats. They need the proteins. The most important meal after a big workout is the first meal. Put the rich seeds in the feeder all they want. They've got uh, energy from Vercella Laga. They have uh, Champion, I think the IC Plus, and um, the Sneaky Mix, the traditional. It's all little fat seeds, but you need to load them with the good food as soon as they come home, and they need to have the minerals. And the birds have been going right to the minerals. They're not hungry. So they have their grits in there, the Belgian grit and red snow, and then the minerals. There's the pack, uh, black minerals. There's a Vercella excuse me, the Vercella Laga, uh, brown pick pots, uh, the pick stones of pick pots, and that's the natural vitamin mineral. The pink mineral is a magnesium block. My brother takes care of the minerals. Minerals. There's a bird that just flew nearly 14 hours. Not too bad. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 14 hours. 18 minutes. Come on. Now the clock. It's hard to tell. It's it's pretty dark. The camera's picking up a lot of light, but it's pretty dark. It's uh, 8.33, and the birds went up at 6. Uh, 15 this morning. This last cock he's eating. I got the lights on in the loft. Uh, he's a five-year-old and 14 hours and 18 minutes just popped in. Unbelievable. Again, they're getting ready for the 600 in two weeks. There's the first bird there just calling. Just come back to the lofts late on the second day. I'm getting ready to go to my club. <laughs> My best 10, 436, was destroyed by a hawk yesterday. I expected her to win the race. It's hard to see. I don't know how she made it home. Her racing career is over. I'm really stunned, but I'm thrilled to get her back. So she'll go into the breeding loft, and that's the end of her career. And boy, I thought she couldn't be beat yesterday. I'll have results uh, later tonight, and I'll finish the video. I'm hoping everybody's enjoyed so far. And this was like one of the happy times to get her back. This week was challenging. Like many of you, I had a really tough toss on Tuesday and lost uh, several really good cocks and one really good hen for no particular reason, possibly a falcon attack. I also, as you saw, my best hen came home and she's in really rough shape. She'll recover, but I'll have to use it for breeding the McLaughs 436. I couldn't sleep all night 
for a couple nights thinking about how great a form she was in and not sure what happened. I did lose my other hand, McLaughlin's 22, 838, which was disappointing. The good news is we finished ninth overall in the Wingland Open. There were 48 lofts, 385 birds, so our first cock was ninth open. Uh, there's a huge front, 100 miles up and down, 50 miles deep. I mean, I was proud of him, and I had nine birds on the day. The birds looked like they didn't even race, which is good. I must have prepared them decent because they flew all day and acted just super.